Hello everyone, today we're going to be solving this physics question here. This is a question that I think could often come up on a test or on an assignment, so I think it's good to know how to solve this kind of question. Suppose that you are called by a lawyer to give advice concerning the physics involved in one of her cases. The question is whether a driver was exceeding the speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour before he made an emergency stop with brakes locked and wheels sliding. The length of the skid marks on the road was 5.85 meters. A police officer made the reasonable assumption that the maximum deceleration would not exceed that of gravity. On the basis of the evidence, was the driver exceeding the speed limit before the brakes were applied? So what happened in this question here was we had a vehicle that was traveling this way, it had some initial speed, some initial velocity that it was traveling this way, and then at this moment here, it started decelerating, so it had a negative acceleration, an acceleration going this way, and at the final time, after some amount of time, the car came to a stop some distance away, And we know what this distance is based on this skid mark. So what we want to find out in this question here was if this vehicle was speeding. So to find out if this vehicle was speeding, what we have to do is calculate its initial velocity. So let's take a look at everything that we do know and don't know. So we have V naught, we have our initial velocity, and that we do not know, we are trying to find that. Uh, let's just write out all these. So there's final velocity, there is the distance traveled, there is the acceleration, and there is the time. So let's write down which of these we do know and don't know. Okay, the final velocity is going to be what? Since this vehicle, it came to a stop at the end and it is no longer moving, the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second. X is the distance traveled by the car, and that we know to be 5.85 meters because that is the length of the skid marks on the road. So this x will be 5.85 meters. A, what is the acceleration? Well, over here it says a police officer made the reasonable assumption that the maximum deceleration would not exceed that of gravity. So we can assume that this is the same as the acceleration due to gravity, so that is 9.81 meters per second squared. And in this case it is negative also because the acceleration is this way towards the left and we can assume that to the right in this diagram that we drew is positive so that we have a positive initial velocity. And the time, how long did this how long was this occurrence? How, how long was the car braking for? How many seconds did this happen for? That we do not know. Okay, so there are two equations that we should be familiar with before starting this, and that is average velocity times time is equal to distance. And we can also express average velocity as velocity initial plus velocity final divided by two. So this equation ends up becoming average velocity times time is equal to distance. So this is the first equation that we should be familiar with. So we can call this equation number one. And the second equation that we should also be familiar with is acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. So we can express that as final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So what we'll have to do in this question is isolate for this t here, and we'll see that in a moment. So let's just do that quickly over here. If we isolate for t on its own here, then time will be equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by acceleration. So we can call this equation two. Okay, so how can we go about solving this question, finding what the initial velocity value is? So 
we have two unknowns here. We don't know what initial velocity is and we don't know what time is, but we have two equations here. So how many unknowns do we have in each of these equations? Well, over here, we don't know what initial velocity is. We know what final velocity is. We don't know what time is, but we know what x is. So we have two unknowns here, initial velocity and time. And in our second equation, we also have two unknowns, time and initial velocity. So what we can do, we can sub in one of these equations into the other equations by isolating for one of the variables, and then we'll have an equation with only one unknown that we'd be able to solve for. So let's do this. Let's sub equation two into equation one. And here's what we get from doing that. So here's equation one and equation two. So equation two, this right here, is going to be subbed in to equation one right here. So wherever we see a t in equation one, that is going to be replaced with what t equals over here. Okay, so let's start writing out equation one. So equation one is initial velocity plus final velocity divided by two. And now this is times t. So instead of t, we're going to put in this. So we have final velocity minus initial velocity divided by a. And that is all equal to x. So now we can see in this equation here, the only unknown that we have is initial velocity. Because the things that we don't know in this situation here are initial velocity and time. So there's no time here, everything else is known. So if we can isolate for initial velocity, then we can solve for initial velocity and we'll have the answer to the question. So let's multiply this out. If we multiply out the numerator here, then we will have vf squared minus v naught squared divided by 2a and that will be equal to x. So we want to isolate for v naught squared so negative v naught squared will be equal to 2 times a times x uh, because we brought the 2a up to the top here by multiplying across and then we subtract vf squared from both sides, so we get vf squared here. So to get initial velocity on its own, we'll just multiply both sides by negative one and take the square root of both sides. So v naught becomes vf squared minus two times a times x and square root of all of that. So let's see, what do we end up getting for these values? So v naught is equal to, what is vf squared? What was the final velocity? Well, the final velocity, remember, was zero because the vehicle, it comes to a stop at the end. So the final velocity here is zero minus two times. Now, what is the value for the acceleration here? 9.81, right? But we have to remember that it's negative 9.81 because we were assuming that to the right is positive so that we have a positive initial velocity. So our acceleration is to the left. So our acceleration is negative in this case. So our acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And that is multiplied by x. So x is the distance that the vehicle traveled, which was 5.85 meters. So 5.85 meters. Okay, and then we have to take the square root of all that. And then our initial velocity becomes 10.71 meters per second. Okay, so this is very nice. We found out what the initial velocity of this vehicle was, but this doesn't answer the question because remember, the question was, was the driver exceeding the speed limit before the brakes were applied? So the speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour. 
So we have to see if this speed here is in excess of 50 kilometers per hour. So what we have to do to answer the question first is convert this to kilometers per hour. And here's how we could do that. So V naught is equal to 10.71 meters per second. And we want it to be kilometers per hour. So instead of meters in the numerator, we want kilometers. So in one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. So now the meters units will cancel out and we'll have kilometers at the top. Now, we want hours in the denominator. So in the denominator, we also have to multiply by something over one hour. So we have seconds here, so we'll want seconds up here to cancel out with that so that we could have kilometers per hour at the end. So how many seconds are in an hour? There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. So our initial velocity of the vehicle was 38.6 kilometers per hour. So we can say 38.6 kilometers per hour is less than 50 kilometers per hour. Therefore, not speeding. Okay, so that is how you solve this question here. This is how we get the initial velocity of this vehicle. We were given the skid marks. We know that the skid mark is the distance that the vehicle traveled, so we know that this here is 5.8. 85 meters. We don't know how long this took. We, we were given the acceleration that the acceleration we assume that it was gravity based on the assumption of the police officer. We know that the final velocity of the vehicle was zero and we had we were left with two unknowns initial velocity and time so we use these two equations based on knowing that Average velocity times time is equal to distance and acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. Based on this, we isolated for time. We plugged in this value wherever we saw time in this first equation so that we had an equation right here with only one unknown, which was initial velocity, which we solved for. So hopefully this video was helpful to you and I'd appreciate it if you could share this with anybody who this might benefit. And I will see you in the next video, so take care.